Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss meals and entertainment. Those expenses are treated differently whether you are a self-employed individual or an employee. Just real quick, if you're a self-employed individual, you are, you are going to prepare a Schedule C and you're going to either have a net income or a net loss. Then you're going to prepare your 1040, your Form 1040, and on your Form 1040, you're going to arrive to adjusted gross income. Net income goes above adjusted gross income. Therefore, meals and entertainment for business purposes are deducted for AGI. Now, if you are an employee and you incur meals and entertainment, you will prepare Schedule A. And if you have any of those meals expenses, you will deduct them on Schedule A which is are suspended from the year 2018 to 2025, then they are deducted from AGI or below the line. So we need to understand at this point, what is meals and entertainment and are they deductible and for how much? Once again, for employees, that's not available between 2018 and 2015. Let's go ahead and get started discussing entertainment. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with entertainment, many businesses incurred costs related to entertainment and meals. What will be an example of this? For example, you might invite your customers, well, to, to golfing or to fishing or to a sports event or to a concert. Well, that's a form of entertainment. Now, why would you do that? Well, because you want to kind of basically build goodwill to grow your business operation. You want to either gain them as a customer or keep them as a customer by keeping them happy. Now, there is a personal enjoyment for the business themselves as well, for the owner of the business. Well, if you're attending a sports event, your favorite team, well, you're also enjoying the event. Okay, so Congress... What they did, they kind of, they said, well, this rule is being abused. So they made the decision to restrict the deduction associated with any entertainment expense. Therefore, simply put, entertainment expense is no longer applicable. What about meals? We'll talk about meals shortly. So the following items are not eligible for deduction, which is entertainment expenses. Any activities typically considered entertainment, amusement, or recreation, no longer applicable. Membership dues for clubs. Uh, for organized for business, pleasure, recreation, or social purposes, not deductible, and any facilities used in conjunction with these activities. Simply put, entertainment expense out, no longer deductible. How about meals? Well, sometimes you might, you might invite your customers or potential customers to a meal. Okay, taxpayers are still permitted to deduct certain food and beverage expenses related to uh, to the operation of their trade or business. Okay, for example, expenses incurred for business meals, we're going to see what business meals are at the end, with current or potential client, as well as meal consumed by employee during work-related work travel, and we talked about work-related travel in a separate recording, are 50%. So what does that mean? Meals are deducted up to 50%. Now, between 2021 and 2022, they had a special for 100%. That's all that's gone. Now it's 50%. What happens sometimes is this. You work for a company and the company will have its own cafeteria, which called, it's called eating facilities. Or sometimes what happens, you work for a company and as you walk, you know, when you take your break, your coffee break, you, you might find bagels there or donuts or sometimes pizza. Those are called the minimus fringe benefits. Simply put, you can, you know, consume those or sometimes fruit or vegetables. Uh, you, you, you'll be able to consume those. So can the company deduct, deduct those expenses? Well, expenses occur in a subsidized eating facility or the minimus fringe benefit applied to food and beverage provided to employees. What does that mean? 
It means from 2018 to 2025, the 50 percent limitation applied to those so when a company incur those so when the company buys the bagel they can only deduct 50 percent of it and when they operate this facility 50 percent is deductible okay and guess what starting 2026 those deductions are eliminated the government is trying to do what raise more money let's take a look at an example Sanofi Pasteur provides an employee cafeteria within its premises catering to its staff member and my wife used to work there and they did have this cafeteria the cafeteria operate on a cost basis simply put it's only for employees and what they do is they pay the cost now why do they do this and actually, actually I used to work with Merrill Lynch at some point and they had this also this cafeteria basically cost basis long time ago well, guess what? Sanofi Pasteur as a company will only be able to deduct 50% of the cost to operate this. Let's take a look at another example. BLCO, Bucknell Lissiki and Company, the CPA firm where I used to work, offer coffee and occasional donuts and bagels to its employee in the break room all the time. And some, and some employees, I remember, they hated it because they were trying to lose weight. This provision qualify as the the minimum fringe benefit and it's not subject to taxation for the employees. So if you ate a, a bagel or uh, or a uh, or a donut, you don't have to, you know, it's it does it's not included in your income. It's just, you know, it's it's under the de minimis fringe benefits. And we talked about those in a separate recording. However, when it comes to deducting the cost of this food, Bucknow is only deducted, only allowed to deduct 50% of the expense. And guess what? Starting in 2026, those deductions are eliminated. There are exceptions to the 50% rule. In other words, when you when you have a meal, there are uh, you can deduct 100% of it. Here are some the some of the exceptions. If you include the meal compensate in the compensation of the employee or independent contractor, then it's fully deductible. So if if they provide you with the meal and say okay, we're going to add, you know, 20 30 dollars to your to your pay, guess what? Now you're responsible for that, then that's fine. Then the company can deduct that as long as you're paying for it. Expenses directly associated with business meetings of employees. If the employees are meeting for business purposes, those are fully deductible. Employer paid recreational or social activities for employee, like an annual holiday parties or spring picnics or holiday picnic, those are fine. For example, where I used to work, always on April 15th, the last tax year, we would go for a huge party. That's one time thing. Yes, they can deduct. 100% of that cost. Business hosting retreats or off-site training events. You can deduct 100% of the meals provided to participants at those locations. So those are, these expenses are 100, these meals are 100% deducted. Let's take a look at this example. Mona earns an all expense paid trip to Europe as a reward for selling the highest insurance for her company, John Hancock. Her employer considered this trip as an extra form of compensation, okay? In this case, she's gonna incur meals and entertainment, that's fine. The 50% rule does not affect, why? Because it's a form of compensation they're paying her. Now, when we say business meals, what do we mean by business meals? To qualify for a deduction when it comes to a business meal, the amount has to be reasonable. Means it means it's not lavish, too much, or extravagant. Either the taxpayer or the employee must be present at the meal. Otherwise, it's not deductible. The food and the beverage must be provided to a current or potential customer or client. It doesn't have to be a current, but at least a potential. And if the meal is combined with entertainment, for example, you attended a sports event and you ordered some food, the cost of the meal and the beverages should be separately itemized on the bill or receipt. So they cannot combine both. You want to make sure you want to keep the receipt, the purpose of the event, who was there, so on and so forth to prove that, to prove the for the IRS, the expense for the IRS. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs that's going to help you understand this topic. Good luck, study hard, whether you are a CPA exam candidate, enrolled agent, or accounting student. Invest in your career and stay safe.